Ethan from Zimmer Labs and I wanted to do a quick video today of the Graflex 3.0 that I just finished up. This is for Rickard. Um, Rickard had a Corbanth Graflex 3.0 order that he wanted me to do a full install on uh, while still retaining all the original parts um, while still keeping it as a 3.0 reveal lightsaber but having it al also work. So I think it came out really well. Rickard, let me know what you think um, and let me walk you guys through it. Um, before we get into it, let me show you, for those of you guys who haven't seen it, this is what it looks like when it's done stock. You have an emitter piece here some sort of internal structure bit, the clamp, and then there is a light up crystal piece, which is this guy. It's um, it's kind of cute. I just have it wired up to a battery so I can show you guys what it does. You could toggle through a few different colors, whatever. But really, at the end of the day, it's just it's it's not really a serious collector piece. It's just kind of a fun little. LED doohickey, maybe make it into like, I don't know, a wand or a Halloween costume or something, but it's that guy, and then there are a few little decorative plastic greebles right here. That's pretty much it. Um, so, Ricard wanted this to be fully functional and then also to be upgraded, so it was a challenge for sure, um, but what I did was I made a fully functional Teensy Saber NeoPixels with Crystal Chamber uh, that's totally modular and I think the best way to show it off to you guys is to build it. This is broken down essentially as far as it can be um, and I'm gonna run through reassembly and show you how it works. Um, in the bottom we've got a 25 millimeter midwoofer speaker. It's the absolute biggest I could get into this build uh, because of the pommel cap. This guy here screws in and sits right around here so the speaker has to go inside of this and I had to machine this out myself um, and I don't have a machine shop so let's just say that was fun. But at any rate this will now at least accommodate this speaker but you can't really go any bigger. Um, but, so, we've got the Stock Custom Works Crystal Chamber here. This is a double pointed quartz crystal, NeoPixel accents, a thread on this pommel section here. Up top we've got the silver section inside here is the battery. This is a 2170 Samsung battery battery protection circuit, NeoPixel blade connector built onto the top, and on the back side of the crystal chamber itself is your recharge port, and also that's where your main power kill switch is, which would be this custom kill key that I made for it. It's just a little flat really level metal kill key that snaps in there like that. You just pull that out to activate the saber. Now, I'll show you guys how this is done. The, uh, the rest, the, the missing grip sections, there are two of them and they are attached with magnets. I added additional magnets to really firm the, the connection up because if this is gonna be a functional saber, those really need to be able to stay on pretty well. So the grip sections are pretty good now. Um, we have, next up, this is the blade holder slash emitter section. And there are pin connectors which attach this to the top. This is not what holds it together. That's just a connection so that the buttons will work. We have a button on top and a button on the bottom. So the two red buttons are what's going to be the buttons on this guy. Once we've got that assembled like this, 
we can then pop open the clamp, make sure everything's lined up, and just slide it in. Now you want to make sure that everything lines up when you do slide it in there. And you know you're lined up when the little screw holes and everything can be seen right through there. So we've got the, uh, the fake slide switch here that sits in this little cutout and there is a small hex screw that holds that in place. And this is a good thing to start with when you're assembling because once this goes in, the internals are now locked in place and nothing can get out of alignment if you wiggle it, you know, you don't have to worry about misthreading anything or whatever, what have you. So here's your bottom red button. These can sometimes be tricky to screw on just because of the way the Graflex um, replicas are built. There's not a whole lot of room for error on those threads. Next up we've got the beer tab. And this screws in to this little tiny hole up top. Once again, not always the easiest thing to do. Once you get it started, you're good. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Hollywood movie magic right there for you. All right, finally the top red button. Next up, blade plug. This is also a piece from the original Graflex Reveal 3.0, the Corban hilt. Um, it was attached with this piece to the actual internals itself, but in order to use this and keep this as a part of the build, I had to remove that bit. So now this just slides right in there. Obviously it goes in further than that. Um, and this is even a spring-loaded spring action metal blade plug, which is, it's really cool looking, to be honest. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna paint or um, powder coat the bottom. I kinda like the polished aluminum down there. But at any rate, that's that guy. Next up, we've got your little copper Graflex pins and I have a just a little tiny, I think it's a 1 8 pin installer tool. And you know what? I'm going to use my other one because I like this one better. So it's just a little tiny wrench basically, which allows you to screw those in without mangling them and roughening up, rounding out the edges or using pliers or anything like that. And Man, it's a lot easier, I'll tell you that, because I used to have to do these with pliers or tweezers when I first got into the, the hobby, and I used to drop these guys and lose these guys like crazy because you just you cannot get a decent grip on them, and as soon as you do, you drop them and they go flying or whatever, and next thing you know, they're gone or they're bent or they're all chewed up looking, but as you can see, these are still nice and perfect looking because this nice little wrench that allows me to do that. All right, so that's actually, nope, not quite. It's almost in, but not quite. One last thing to do, which is screw down the clamp section here. And this will end up locking the whole the whole hilt in place. And what I did was I threaded and tapped the second hole, which you can see right there. 
This is the hole that comes stock on the Corbett. This is the one that allows you to insert the screw and then screw right through all three sections of the internal components to lock it all in place. So simply by putting this little screw in there that came with it, a Corbanth hex screw, that finishes and locks the whole thing into place. Nice. And the best part is it still allows the clamp to be adjusted to whatever angle you like it at. I usually will put it about two thirds or three quarters of the way from the bottom up towards the top so it's not dead centered. And then you lock it down. And that, as they say, guys, is that. You have a fully modular, fully rebuilt Graflex with crystal reveal panels, access to your recharge panels, a nice accurate blade plug, and the most important bit, a fully functional NeoPixel Teensy Saber. Pretty sweet, right? I was super happy with how this came out. Um, in order to lock the blade in, I used this as the blade retention. I took out the standard hex screw that's there, and then I drilled and tapped for a larger hex screw that reaches all the way through and grabs onto the blade. And once you've got it reassembled like this, it acts and operates just like any other Teensy Saber that I've built. Um, with the exception that you've got straight up reveal panels, that simple. Um, I don't think this is necessarily the perfect Saber for dueling or even cosplay because it still at the end of the day has magnetic panels and if you're not careful, I mean you can swing this thing around. It's rock solid, but I wouldn't duel with it. You know, pieces are liable to go flying off if you lose your grip on it. But nonetheless, I don't think that's what Ricard has in mind. I think he wants to have a nice shelf piece that works as a functional string blade saber. With smooth swing effects. Some blade animations and a nice pull away panel so he can really have it set up for display in a bunch of different ways and so that is that this is the uh, Corbanth Graflex 3.0 crystal reveal fully installed and converted into a fully functional NeoPixel Teensy Saber, and I think it came out really well. Um, what have I not mentioned? I guess I don't, don't remember mentioning this, but obviously this guy, as you can see, is a different pommel cap from the standard Corbanth uh, Graflex cap, um, and it didn't have any vent holes, so I put a massive vent hole in there underneath the cobalt clip. You cannot see it except from underneath whatsoever, but it does allow the sound to vent out pretty well. Uh, speakers right there. And it does sound pretty good. Um, that was the one thing that I was most concerned about with this build was that the sound was gonna be really just inadequate because of the internal setup and the overall kind of small size of the speaker, but at the end of the day, it does sound pretty darn good.
jump back to the beginning here. Another thing that I probably never really mention with these videos is that the audio player is a really nice feature. So you do a long press on the power button and that starts up your audio track. Each blade has a different track and then you can just fire up the saber as you ordinarily would. And now I can have a, a soundtrack to my butt whooping when I'm about to go nuts and swing this thing around. There it is. Gotta love that. Long press to turn it off. Next font has a different audio track. Evidently I'm not really good at it right now. Uh, what else to show you guys? Uh, if you have the blade turned on and you long press the activation button, you're going to get your quotes. Uh, I try to have each blade set up uh, with a different sound font and a different set of quotes. Uh, it's a purple blade, so as you can imagine, some Samuel Jackson stuff. I don't think so. This gives a tasty burger. Love that. It's totally inappropriate, but. I am going to end this once and for all. The oppression of the Sith will never return. You have lost. So that's the idea for that guy. And like I said, each preset has different ones. We'll jump back to the first. So you guys get the picture. Um, I'm not going to do a video where I just sit there and play with this thing for an hour, but I'd love to. Um, but that's that's what we've got here. And uh, Rickard, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, thanks for watching. Actually, the one other thing I should probably run through real quick. Uh, recharge adapter right here. Nice dummy cell. So you plug this guy into any lithium battery charger and plug that into the hilt. Um, then I wanted to show you guys what was left after, from all the parts that came with the original Graflex 3.0 kit, everything went into the Saber. So it's not like I gutted it and uh, installed whatever I wanted to install. I wanted to stick with and keep it as true to the original Corbanth concept as possible. So, this little crystal LED thingy, obviously, this had to go. 
And then there was this much, this brass, like I don't know, cylinder type thing, and these five little plastic greebles. That's it. Every single other part, no matter what, every single other part is in there is part of the build and was incorporated into it. Um, and that was definitely probably the most challenging part about this build. That, I think, is really all I have to say about it. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, take it easy.